Hello, my loves. <laughs> Welcome back. Someone requested messages from our ancestors and they asked so sweetly. I appreciate it so much. So I thought it was a good idea. It really resonated with me as well. So I wanted to spend this morning with you. If you hear any noise in the background, I have the fountain going. And also we have some storms that are about to come through the area. So if we're lucky, we can get some beautiful rain sounds. I'll let you know. Okay, so we have three piles here. We have pile number one, which is going to be this beautiful geode that I've had for a while. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous crystal. It has super grounding energies to it, which I love. Then we have this heart crystal, another one that I love. And then we have this clear quartz crystal, which as I'm looking at it, the messages that I'm hearing are, it's like calling. So maybe this might be a phone call or something that you're waiting for, or something is calling out to you. I did not pre-shuffle at all. In fact, I don't even know what deck I'm gonna be working with. It's in this bag. Let's see, let's discover, shall we? I always like to surprise myself, even though I don't like surprises. But this is a surprise that I can handle. Okay, Mermaid Tarot. All right, let's do it. All right, well, take some time, if you need it, in order to vi vibe with each of the crystals. <laughs> Nova says hi. <laughs> Um, and see which one resonates with you. Franklin too says hi. And then I'll meet you guys at your pile. All right, my love. So if you chose this beautiful geode baby, this is what your ancestors need you to hear, know, and understand right now at this moment in time. The general overarching messages that your ancestors. Oh my goodness, two of cups. That one slipped out strong. Okay. Oh, look at that. The world card. You know what I just heard? Um, Sierra song, level up, level up, level up, level up. ancestors speak. I find it so funny that this is the first message and I'll talk to you about that in a second. I don't like that so I'm going to pull some more but that was the king of wands for anybody who five of cups. Yep. I don't know how this ended up happening but my camera just stopped filming um, and in the Meantime, in between time, these are the cards that jumped out. We have Five of Cups, Four of Swords, King of Pentacles, Four of Wands, Seven of Wands, and the storm started growling in the background, which I love. But honestly, guys, that all in itself really speaks to me and confirms the first message that I was starting to feel. So I'm high key happy that it happened and now I'm ready to share it with you. I don't know how far along in the video and how far along in the message, pretty much I was just pulling the cards, but what I will say, and this really stood out to me, is that spirit, your ancestors are calling for you and take this message how it resonates because I respect my ancestors 1000%, but at the same time, you know, I... I live my life and I take their wisdom. I take their counsel and their advice. However, you know, I may not always listen to it a hundred percent. 
usually they give very good advice or they're very similar to me. So we're synchronized, but whatever you choose, you know, listen to your own intuition, but your ancestors are speaking clearly about putting. Okay. So let's try this again. So those that chose this geode, your cards, I don't know what was going on with your video, um, but it's interesting because there is a very specific message that came through as I was pulling the cards. And the fact that my camera crashed and wouldn't allow me to record any further, and I had to, I had to start this over three times. So the significance of number three is probably very, very important to you. And I will say, fingers crossed, this video doesn't crash again. But I will say that I found it, I, I was trying to say this in the original, that I found it so interesting and so significant that, and even a part of the message, that the fact that this is the first message from the ancestors the fact that this is the first thing that needs to be heard says a lot to me and i'm going to try my best to explain what it is that i'm feeling sensing right now so what i said and what i want to make sure that you guys know is that the ancestors want you to put relationships first i don't know if you were someone who's been so hyper focused on your work or your goals, or your education, or travel, or being independent. But right now, they want you to rely on them when it comes to finding your partner, or when it comes to solidifying partnership and healthy balance within your intimate relationships. I do get a strong sense that this has a lot to do with really intimate connections. So this could be your other half, quote unquote, as they say, like a partner, your marriage partner, who you're supposed to spend your life with. Um, or this could be deeper friendships, connections, but it's, the, it's a high quality, high caliber level of relationships. Now, again, there is a significance of the number three that came through. This is my third time trying to film this, but I am getting a sense too with these three cards and just this intuitive knowingness that the number three is going to be significant. This could be three days, three weeks, three months. It's not so long as three years unless there's been a period without for three years. And I'm not someone who promises something that I don't sense, okay? Or promises just to make views or make you, know, make you feel good. I've never... I've never been that type of girl to just say something to be like, oh yeah, to make you feel better. In the end, ultimately, I don't feel like that serves the person if you're lying to them and being like, oh yeah, th it won't be three years from now. But honestly, I do get a strong sense that this is something that happens, uh, I don't say quick enough, like quick or fast, but it's something that happens quick enough. And the ancestors are really wanting you well, they're really wanting to acknowledge your independence. They're wanting to acknowledge your growth, your dedication, your, I don't know why, but the word charisma. Wow. Okay. I thought the camera started, stopped recording again. Um, I don't know why they're saying charisma. Um, your optimism and your ability to prevail, your ability to push past and pers persevere despite obstacles, despite negativity, despite opposition. And they celebrate your, your um, ability to lock in on what you want to develop, what you want to grow. This is giving me someone who has sacrificed a lot. And by sacrifice, I mean your relationships, your intimate relationships or intimacy within your close relationships. Some of you guys need to hear that you feel like it wasn't by choice. You feel like this sacrifice was not by choice. If you could, you would have had the best of both worlds. You would have had it all. So there was a lot of disappointment, frustration, and sadness. And it's almost like necessity is the mother of invention. So you've almost had to, or you were almost forced to become this independent, forced to be reckoned with. Um, if you would have had, if you had it your way, maybe you would have had 
both things going on, or maybe you would, you know, maybe be more in the relationship and less in the independent space, if that makes sense. But your ancestors are acknowledging the fact that, yeah, the create what they want you to know is that you feel like you were forced, but the reality is, is that for a lot of people, they would have settled. For a lot of people, they would have given up and they would have accepted scraps. They would have accepted what was being offered to them. And you were the person who said, you know what? I refuse to stay in a relationship. I refuse to entertain. I refuse to settle for relationships that I know do not serve me or are not high quality, high caliber is the word that they keep coming through. Your ancestors are acknowledging the fact that in the past and generationally, it's not that they had to settle, but all that they could, all that their opportunities afforded them was survival. And they are so impressed. The word is impressed. They're so impressed by your ability, your mindset, the fact that you have this understanding of, you know what, I'm going to find a way. If the way doesn't exist, I'm going to push through. I'm going to pave it. I'm going to chop it down. And for a lot of you guys, you did this solo dolo. A lot of you guys did this alone. Some of you guys might have actually been in relationships, like marriages or partnerships. But the, the wild thing is, is that it's almost like you were doing it single. You were almost kind of carrying a relationship. For, for There's a specific message of like a partner that was sick or a partner that was immature, or a partner that was had to, for reasons, their own unique re reasons. I'm not, I'm not a person to point fingers or judge. I'm just saying that, and th because there's no re need for me to judge, but it just seems like if you chose this pile, you had to either a do it on your own. You were left to your own devices. You're left to figure it out for yourself, or b. You were in a relationship and had to carry the weight of the relationship or the burden by yourself. And that means that you might have been the sole breadwinner or whatever. Either way, your ancestors are coming through right now and they're saying we need to first and for we're going to first and foremost prioritize the deeper level of intimacy and connection that you rightfully deserve within your life right now. And within three days, three weeks, three months, you're going to see a, a, a radical change, a radical shift. There is this message here of honoring, your ancestors are saying, honor us for the three months, honor us, it's three months. Honor us for the three months, go to your altar and mourn and connect with us and share with us the baggages of your heart, the burdens of your heart, talk to us about it. And that is how you can um, invite them in. Like not invite them in because I feel like a lot of you guys do invite them in, but that's how you can invite their magic in because they want for you guys, look at this. It's like, this is so powerful. And I can't, I can't stress to you enough this strong feeling that I sense that there's a reason why this is the first message. There's, there's, it's like, it's not a coincidence. I feel that it's not a coincidence that this is the first message because this is the first thing that they want you to receive and know this is priority number one. And I feel like a lot of you guys, you've had to put a lot of other things first. You've had to put a lot of other, other people's happiness first. You might be the friend or the person that can always, you, they, everyone can count on you, but like at the same time, like, can you count on others? It's like you really, it has been very unfair or off out of whack, a little off balance. And your ancestors saying, ancestors are saying, we need you. We want you. It's good for you to be in a healthy, equal partnership. The word is equally yoked. They want you to go to the altar or go to them, promise for three months, to go to them and talk to them about your experiences, talk about your frustration, talk about your sadness, and really call out, kind of like, I think that's pumpkin. I don't think that's pumpkin. Pumpkin's been really quiet lately. For those of you guys that don't know, I have chickens. Um, Queen Bee Homestead, find, find me on Instagram. There's Queen Bee Homestead and there's Bahati Life. Anyways, um, <clears throat> I think that's cobweb and pumpkin. 
but they're they're starting to look for shelter right now because it's start it's gonna start raining soon. <clears throat> I think it's so significant and so powerful that we have the King of Pentacles here and the Four of Wands and the Seven of Wands. I'm just receiving a message right now. Your ancestors are, I'm, I'm watching them. Hold on a second. Let me just close the door for a little bit because it's going to bother me. The vision that it is that I'm seeing, or that I just saw, because I, I did get distracted, is someone sitting at a wood desk. It's like a deep wood desk. Not as dark as mahogany, but they're they're writing on this piece of paper. And the piece the paper is really significant because it's not I, I'm getting a sense that it's not something that they could afford or that they would normally be able to afford. It's almost like a luxury or it's something that they had to create themselves. Like it's paper that you have to make. And I know that that sounds so like, okay, but it's really important because it's showing how important this letter or how important this petition or how important this message is. The fact that they would go out of their way to take out of their mouth in order to write this letter or write this petition or create this paper. And they're writing with this pen. And this pen is almost, what I'm getting, and this is all coming from the Seven of Wands. Um, this pen is another cherished item, another cherished treasure. And I know some of you guys are like, well, I've got a million pens and I actually hate getting pens. We get them for free all the time. But back in the day, or at least for your ancestors, a pen was, was really powerful. And a pen was hard to come by or it was special in some way. And they are using the ink and they're using this paper in order to write this letter. And I feel like this is a letter to your ancestors or a letter to your lover. Just kind of explaining the journey, explaining or documenting documenting the, the path or just talking about your experience, talking about what it's been like for you. I feel like the reason why this is, is significant because you are going to read this letter or give this letter to your partner or you're going to give it to your children. And you're, this letter, you're going to share with them how much you wanted this love, how much you waited for this love. With Seven of Wands, I just heard one of the ancestors say, mark my words. They said, mark my words. Interesting. There's some things that are getting circled. Um, that, okay, they just said in the future, they're going to circle certain key points, like certain things that are going to ultimately manifest. So it's like this love letter to your spouse, to your partner, whether you know them now or whether you are going to be meeting them in three months. If you're in a relationship right now, the three months is going to be about rehabilitating the relationship, making sure that it's solid, stable. If, if you are in a relationship right now, I want you to, your ancestors are warning you about putting all the other things first before the relationship because at the end of the day, they want you to understand the importance of connection it's really important that you prioritize this and that you put it first. And for three months, you dedicate yourself to talking to your ancestors about blessing the relationship, about blessing the footsteps that you guys are taking towards each other, things of that, of that nature. The King of Pentacles and the Four of Wands here has a lot to do of course, with marriage, but it's about what stability and commitment and exclusivity looks like for you, what that feels like for you. Okay, I just got an image of Bob Ross and how he would 
like even a mistake would be transformed into something beautiful, you, you're going to want to sit with that energy for a full day of like understanding and appreciating and respecting how even a mistake or something that you don't like or you don't love or things didn't pan out the way that you ideally would have wanted them, how it can be transformed into something more beautiful. And that that creates this element of stability that will surprise you and, and beauty and bounty within your intimate relationship, within your marriage, within your, within your, I just heard your contract. So whatever the contract is for that relationship, you're going to, if you look at it or if you call in a partner or if you enable um, energy of expecting perfection or performance, it's like what your partner can do or how you have to perform for them then you are not going to invite in a long lasting relationship because performance is not, is not authentic and perfection is not realistic. They want you to have a deeply safe space where you can be all of yourself, flaws and all. And this is not just for you to receive, but also your partner. Are you ready to, and yes, you are. Like, stop, we cannot, I, your ancestors just got super agitated. They almost like smacked, <laughs> like they almost smacked me in like in the back of the head just now of being like, they need to know, like you need to know that you are ready for this right now. If a lot of people hear this, this message, this common message of when I'm ready to love, you know, or I need to be fully healed. And that's the thing. Your ancestors are like, no, this is right now. Dedicate the next three months to giving to abandoning, abandoning, I'm sorry, abandoning this idea of perfection, of, of abandoning this idea of I have to be something other or I have to be healed or I have to be whole. The thing is, is like the only thing that you need to do right now is to accept and allow yourself to be accept, accepted. And for three months, your ancestors are calling you to put aside all of the things that you normally pursue and go to them, seek them for some real human hands-on, um, tangible help in restoring the relationship. This doesn't mean that you go out and you run and you pursue this connection or healing. It means that you surrender and you step into a space of acceptance and deep, deep sense of peace and direction in your life that is ultimately going to lead to your greater sense of happiness. Some of you guys question if there is someone out there for you. This needs to be your confirmation that the answer is yes. Um, again, when it comes to performance and perfection, some of you guys believe, have this belief that in order for a relationship to be stable and committed, it has to look a certain way, seven of wands. And your ancestors are saying no. <laughs> not at all. We want you to be happy. And happiness looks different for everyone. And you don't have to compromise or some of you guys are going through, I don't know why I'm getting like transition or transgender type of things. It's um, like not type of things, but a path. And some of you guys are like, my, per my perfect person doesn't exist because of this about myself. It's something that you guys feel like is a blemish. But in reality, it's like, imagine finding the person and imagine allowing your ancestors to help you to find the person that understands you like no other. That is so powerful and that's what they want you to receive. So whatever you think this blemish is, it's not a blemish, it's beautiful. I want to remind you that they see for you and the first thing they wanted you to see and receive is the power of stabil a stable, comfortable, 
easy, abundant, graceful, intimate connection. It is so. <laughs> now, let's go to the Oracle. Which is so funny, you guys. I've been working with my, um, the Love and Romance candle for the collective. And I've had to do a lot of backup energy work in order to remove blockages here. Normally it takes about seven days for the candle to burn, but I had to pause it a lot in order to break through some barriers. For those of you guys that don't know, I lit a candle for the collective when it comes to love and relationships because one of the weekly messages said that that's what we needed. All right, bumblebees. I don't know why, but your uh, the camera died out again. So it is what it is. Can't change a camera. Oh my goodness, Grace. Did I not say that, Grace? That is so beautiful. This is what your ancestors want you to receive right now. This is what they want your relationships to look like. This is what you doubt can exist. Does this even exist anymore? It's like walking through the woods and finding this treasure and just being so surprised and so stunned, pleasantly surprised that something like this or a person, a human being or a relationship exists and that you're the one who gets to have it. And that's God's grace. And your ancestors are wishing over you that we can welcome this into your life now. I really want you to Google the word grace, if you can, and just sit with the definition. And, I, and when you sit and you journal about it, what does it bring up for you? Where have you seen grace? Have you seen it at all? That's beautiful. Focus. Yeah, your focus has been pulled in a lot of different directions, but I don't know if relationships has been priority number one. And I think that the reason why it hasn't been is because it's been really frustrating it's like, why would I focus on something if it's not working out? I just heard rep repetition is like the epitome of insanity. Some of you guys feel like you would be insane to keep showing up in the same way or expecting a different outcome from the space that you've been looking for love or you've been looking for a breakthrough with relationships. So you're just like, you know what? I'm not crazy, so I'm not doing this. But for the next three months, again, your ancestors are saying, listen, we hear you. We know. We acknowledge it. We celebrate what you have done. We celebrate how it has been. But for the next three months, go to the altar, talk to us, write it all down. At least once every day, if you can, as often as you can, really commit to writing love letters to your ancestors and talking to them about the good and the bad the high points and the battles of your heart. Another thing that I'm hearing is to ask them and ask God or ask the divine to give you what you need, not so much all of what you want. Or a healthy combination of both. And this means too that they want you to focus on not accepting just anything that comes into your life, having a certain level of discernment, but pay attention to the spirit of grace in your life. 
because that's how you're going to know this person is it for you. This doesn't have to be just a romantic relationship, although for a lot of you it will be. Gratitude. This is giving me very much law of attraction vibes. This is telling me about being thankful for the journey, however difficult. And that's kind of where this message of grace really does come through. Because you can allow it to harden you. You can allow yourself to give up. You can allow yourself to be like, enough is enough. But that's the first message that your ancestors wanted you to receive right now. And you know what? I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm sending you guys all of my love. What a beautiful message. I think that for a lot of you guys, you might find yourself needing to listen to all of the messages. I mean, to each their own. I hear about that a lot. But again, if you're one of the people that has to listen to all of the messages or is called to listen to all of the messages... I want you to remember that there is a reason why you had to listen to this one first. All right, my loves, I'm going to move on to the next um, option, which is the heart crystal. All right, my loves, if you chose the heart crystal, this is the message from your ancestors. What do they need to hear? I'm, I'm getting a vision of three main cards. I'm also hearing a buzzing, a hum. Um, it's like a beehive. I'm hearing the words community. I just heard um, chopping block. Your ancestors are, if you chose this pile, your ancestors are telling you to put something on the chopping block. Something needs to be removed, cut out, canceled, cleared from your life right now. They don't like this for you. They, they're saying you know what it is. <laughs> It's, you know, because it's something that you don't like. It's something that doesn't make you feel good. It's something that doesn't resonate with you. It doesn't feel good for you. It feels like a punishment. It feels like it's not welcoming. It feels like you're trying too hard. And for what? They want you to stop trying so hard. I'm hearing some of you guys are, okay, wow. Um, I just, I, I thought that this was about you, but this might actually have to do with someone else. You might be comforting someone else. Someone who, it's like they're, I just heard the word self-sabotage. Wow, this is a very specific message. It's like self-sabotage. They keep sabotaging themselves. <laughs> self-sabotage, that's the definition of it. Um, it's starting to get dark in here, my loves, because there's a storm that's coming through. Oh my God, look at my chicken. What are you doing over here, bud? They're not, it doesn't seem like they're helping themselves. So they kind of expect or wait for other people to help them. They're not really doing enough to help themselves. Or this might be you. Every time someone offers you help or reaches out to help you or help you to advance or you help them to advance, they shut it down. They ice it out. They. This is someone who may be wallowing in self-pity. I'm not tr being jud judgmental at all by any means. To each their own. Everybody has a different path, a different plan, and different reasons for doing what they do. So you might, they might, whoever this is, might have a valid reason for feeling what they feel. But your ancestors are, are talking about putting that on the chopping block. Okay. And I'm hearing the buzzing again, and I'm being reconnected back to the word community. 
So we're, you can't, so they're saying you're only as strong as your weakest link. So if there is a sick member in the community, it will infect the whole hive. So this is about cutting out the, the poison, cutting out the dysfunction, cutting out the ailment, the illness, taking care of it, asking for help. Or if someone has been offering help, you need to receive it. Or help yourself to pull yourself out of this funk. Don't wall wallow in the feeling of, I can't help myself or I can't do this by my own. It's, there's a, I keep hearing the buzz of a, of a, of a hive. So everyone needs to be cared for and tended to. Let's shuffle from messages from your animal spirit guides. I'm really intrigued to see what will come through because this is a very specific message. This is what your ancestors want you to receive is help. Um, the other thing is like, let's say this is not you. Let's say this is someone they're telling you that the infected limb has to be cut from the group because it'll infect the entirety of the hive. All right, these cards just wanted to jump out, right? So we had the weasel. Be silent, pay attention, and simply observe with your eyes, ears, and physical feelings what's happening inside and all around you. Keep your sense of humor. Don't take things so seriously. Yeah, okay, and the condor. You're too enmeshed in this situation, so step back and see the bigger picture before making any decisions or taking actions. I actually feel like that is what you're being called to do, is actually taking action. I feel like with the condor here, that's what's being cut out, is you waiting for something else to come in or someone something to change, and spirit is like, there, I'm actually seeing someone handling, like, ha um, I was just about to say hack, but literally someone, the, your ancestors is, is, are handing you a hack, like a big, like one of those heavy blades that you use to chop meat. <laughs> and they're like, you gotta, you, you gotta cut this off. You have to cut this off. They're saying you are smart, you are capable. And enabling this is going to sicken the hive. Or sickness will spread if you don't get rid of this thing. This could actually be a health matter. Some of you guys are so afraid to confront, to confront something, to confront pain, to confront an ailment or ask for help on it and and your guides are like your ancestors are saying you 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 got to you got to you got to look into this matter a little further stop putting this off <laughs> acceptance accept it <laughs> power yes you're capable they're literally giving you, they're handing over this huge hack, like hacking thing is the word that's coming through. And they're like, chop it off, chop it off. Come on. Like you got it. We're going to give you the strength to hack. Some of you guys are really afraid of the outcome and don't be. Acceptance is, is acknowledging something for what it is and being like, you know what? This isn't going to change. Ooh, sanctuary. It's funny that the sanctuary card is coming through because, again, it's bringing me back to the hive. It's something within your home environment or safe space or your body. Your body is a, is a temple. Your body is a sanctuary. That it's accepting it and changing it or getting rid of the ailment or getting rid of the problem. Ancestors, is there anything else specific that you want them to receive that will resonate with them or ring a bell? I just heard food. Did you eat? Eight of Pentacles, yeah, there's some work that needs to be done. Some of you guys are, need to put in a little bit more work and effort into how you're taking care of yourself. If this is, you've been eating out a lot, this is time for you to make more meals at home or finding solutions. They're really wanting you to cut out something. 
a bad habit, a person, they're like, find the solution now to make this healthy transition for you more feasible, more realistic. You can't keep um, showing up in the same way because it's making you sick and it's going to infect the entirety of the hive. Yeah, dude, look at this. Would you, could you look at this? Would you look at this? <laughs> All right, so we have the devil card, right? So this is the problem. This is the ailment. This is the sickness. This is what we need to get rid of. Or this is what is holding you back. All right. And then we have the king of the hack. <laughs> the king of swords. All right, let's get rid of it. Let's just chop this right on out. Right on out. And six of pentacles, this is about asking for help and receiving help. So that's a very specific message, short, sweet, to the point. I feel like we're going to get some thunder and lightning. So beautiful. There it is. Love that. Can you guys hear the, the thunder? Such a vibe. All right, my loves. I am wishing you wellness. I'm wishing you power and strength. I'm wishing you peace. I'm wishing you blessings and healing. And I'm wishing that you subscribe to this YouTube channel. <laughs> or leave a thumbs up if it's helped in some way. All right, guys, that was short, sweet, and to the point. Now let's move on to the third message. This beautiful crystal. Let's see if it'll focus. There we go. Love it. All right, let's move on to this crystal's message. All right, so if you chose this beauty, oh my goodness, I just heard Goosh Raba. <laughs> what movie was that from? Goosh Raba. Jack Nichols, is that his name? All right, ancestors, speak to us. What are you trying to tell us? Oh, goodness. Ace of Swords, Four of Wands. Okay, wow. I'm actually, I just heard 10 cards, Jess. All right, so we will pull 10 cards. What's the third? I said, do 10 cards. Oh, okay, that makes sense with Goose Frabba. For some of you guys are like, what is Goose Frabba? That means um, it's from a movie of a guy who was in anger management. Um, he was working on his anger management. So he would say a, a, a word, which was that one. I'm probably not saying it correctly, in order to help de-escalate him when he was upset and being triggered. Yeah, speaking of angry, right? We have Queen of Wands reversed. <laughs> or speaking of getting triggered or short-tempered. All right, and, and your ancestors, I keep wanting to say spirit, but your ancestors are wanting 10 cards, so we're going to honor that. All righty. Look at that. Balance. Ace of Cups reversed. Page of Wands, Emperor Reversed, and Nine of Pentacles. Do you see how perfect that was? I didn't even have to try. All right, so that's always how it is, though, dude. Always honor and listen to the guides as they're speaking. So I am getting a sense of uh, balance, needing to invite instability. I heard the word reform. Something is being reformed in your life, something is being um, reworked on. Uh, they, okay, wow. They don't want you to tank this. <laughs> your guides are saying, we don't want you to tank this before it has a time, has had a time to be reformed, right? So there's something that they see or are aware of that they don't want you to abandon ship because you can't see the end result. You can't see how this is going to work out they also don't want you to 
I just heard wires crossed. They don't want, there's sometimes, I don't know what this is. There's sometimes you have like a good idea or that you have a plan and it kind of crosses wires and then you get frazzled and you spaz out. Not spaz out, but you burn out. It kind of is giving me like electrical current that's shooting through and then something kind of hits it. It sparks and, and then backfires and goes back and then you just kind of poop out or you get shot back or something like it's, it's kind of what it is I'm getting um your ancestors want you to okay they said fix 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 the source go back and fix the source um don't abandon it they really want you to go back and look for the problem instead of being constantly triggered by the the fact that a problem keeps occurring they want you to really fix it this is going to require a level of patience and dedication and persistence that may test your may really really test you but they're like be curious be explore this a little further go a little further you gotta dig a little deeper um that's the song just came through um from princess and the frog i love that movie by the way i should probably watch it again as well as uh what was i think it's i'm pretty sure it's jack nichols um with it i'm it's this guy who's in anger management if you guys can can you comment down below and maybe watch that movie maybe there's a message there but there's something guys there's something here that your ancestors want you to know they're calling you out on something they're saying once something doesn't work out you may give up or you may reroute and then you cross wires and try to go a different way they're like don't do that try when you see the problem pause and then see if you can not fix it but find a solution find a solution don't just abandon the ship or tank it some of you guys will you'll start to see something happening and then all of a sudden you're like it's not working and then you just toss all of it away and they're just like woosa <laughs> woosa some of you guys are getting triggered by the same things same people same circumstances and they're like all right let's find a different let's find a different way like let's find something else and it, your solution is not going to be in you tossing it out. There's going to be a, a level of curiosity and exploration that you're going to want to experience that is going to help you level up in your growth. Because what are you going to do? Like, what are you ultimately training yourself to do to, to give up when, you know, something doesn't work out or you try, try, try five times and there's a fail? No. They don't want you to give up on something. They want you to find the solution. They want you to find whatever it is that needs to get pulled out. So when you find yourself getting triggered or when you find that you hit a roadblock, this is when you sit. My chickens are really calling out right now. Um, this is when you sit and you finagle it a little bit. You work it a little bit. This is like buying a house and finding out the electricity, the electricity in the home needs to be reworked. Um, and then you being like, I don't want the home anymore. It's just like, it's your dream home. Like the home, you can fix the electricity, but you can't really fix a, a house's location or the, if it's close to your family and your friends, those are things that they're saying, like, don't throw something away because of something that can be fixed when something is actually high key kind of perfect. That's the message. Message. Chaos. Look at that. Storm. See the electricity that's pushing through? Let me show you guys. Let me see if you guys can see my chicken. Can you see him? If you guys can see this burn in the grass right there, that's where Nova and Franklin make their peepees. And this chicken is named Onyx. He's a sweet baby. Oh, he just called. <laughs> so cute. Anytime I'm doing a reading, you guys, they literally come to they come to the door and sometimes they tap and they look and they listen. And as soon as the reading is over, I'll still be talking and they will go back to their 
to their play space. Okay, so strength, right? This is what your ancestors are trying to develop within you right now is your ability to prevail despite the blockages, despite the obstacles. They don't want, it takes real true strength in order to watch and observe and just be like, okay, here's a problem and not run away from it and not abandon it and just be like, you know what? I'm going to fix this. I'm going to try. And whatever this thing is, it is going to be worth it. Like I said, I'm getting this image of a house and it's like your dream home. The foundation of the home is solid. The house is beautiful. The location is perfect. The, the community, the people, these are things that you can't change. But when you find it, you invest in it. And don't allow something simple as, okay, the water pressure is fucked up. Or the electricity needs to be redone. Or the roof needs to be fixed. Those are $6,000 fixes. So that's where you're going to pull your strength from. Is by fixing the problem, fixing the source in order to make your dream a reality. That requires amazing strength. Instead of you abandoning ship when the first sign goes wrong or you see a problem. And this message here, grace. Again, I, I was telling the first group about looking up the definition of the word grace. That The word grace has, there was like for three years, it really defined, oh my God, there's the number three again. It really defined my experience here on earth. If you guys are wondering why it's getting dark it's because we've got some storms rolling through so it just got really really dark up in here up in here all right but um yeah go ahead and sit with the word uh grace and this is about accepting something or someone for what it is or accepting the situation and loving it despite its flaws loving it despite the the problems that right that is true that is true strength right right there okay what else do we have from these animal guides and your ancestors are saying they're developing this i this not idea of grace but this gift of grace within your life so maybe some of you guys expect that someone's going to find something about you that they don't like and you're just expecting them to abandon or or maybe you have someone who look at that meerkat wow get support from a trusted group of like-minded friends you're afraid that someone's gonna see something about you or you're gonna see something and then you're just gonna leave it you're gonna be left or you're gonna need to leave and i just don't think that that's the case what else do we have here wanted to come out rattlesnake the experiences that you're presently going through are initiation into fulfilling your purpose as a healer and that's so true do you see how it's like heal heal the problem don't run from it or don't abandon it and sometimes you really do have to look that snake right in the eye and say you know what i'm not afraid of you i'm actually going to give you grace in the midst of the chaos and i'm going to fix this i'm going to show you that i love you i'm going to show you that i'm here i'm going to show you that i'm not going to run The winds are starting to pick up and I'm obsessed. It's so beautiful. And this is when you say to yourself, you know what? I'm not afraid of a little storm. I'm not afraid of a little conflict. In fact, I'm going to work through this with you. There's this really overarching message of love here too that I keep getting. Doing what you love, being what you love, embodying, embodying love. What's the last message, Spirit? This really wants to come through. Gorilla. Take the time to listen compassionately to those you love, especially your family members. That is so beautiful. This is about running away, not running away from or not running towards something. It's by being strong and still in the midst of chaos, in the midst of conflict or tumultuous energies or imperfection and saying, you know what? I don't expect anything other than other than you from you. I want you. I want this. This is right. This is good. I love that. All right, my loves. So we are finally 
um, getting the storm coming through. And I don't know about you, but whenever a storm comes through, I shut everything down. <laughs> and the timing is perfect because it's starting to rain. So I'm going to enjoy this. Yeah, can you guys hear the rain? It's beautiful. I'm going to enjoy this moment and, um, you know, just meditate while the rain falls and, you know, send out peaceful vibes to you, my people, you, the collective, those listening, please, I invite you to give this video a thumbs up and feel free to follow me on Bahati Life Instagram or uh, Queen Bee Homestead Co., which is where I'm like whipping up body butters, tending to my chickens, tending to my animals, just living the Virgo life. It's very peaceful most, most of the time. <laughs> Other times it's chaotic and fun, but I'm here for it. I accept it. All right, you guys, I'm sending you all of my love. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope these messages make sense and resonate. And um, yeah, make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.